On the second pass, it narrowed it down to just two people standing there. And it was actually Abby's mom and her sister, Karina. Whenever the plant was coming around, I was like, okay, if this next number does not match Mrs. Barnett's ticket, then it's gonna be a girl. from Without a Crystal Ball. Welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a wonderful day. It's Wednesday, February 23rd. It's my husband's birthday. Can everyone online say happy birthday, husband? Happy birthday, Todd. Have a good day. He's such a good man, such a good husband. I can't even tell you how lucky I am to have him. I absolutely am so grateful for everything that he does for my son, for me, for my house, for my life, for our life. He's phenomenal and I want him to have a wonderful day. So do me a favor, send him some love today. And also, can you do me a favor? Can you indirectly let me know that you're wishing him a happy birthday if you don't leave a comment by giving me a like on this video? I mean, it's either or, right? Okay, so let's talk about some of the tougher, some of the uh, fluffier stuff. So yesterday I did a video on Michelle Duggar taking the kids to Nebraska. And we talked about how Jeremiah is getting married in March. So I have a mix of people that follow this channel. There are those of you that are anti-Duggar, that do not like the Duggars, that hate the Duggars, that want nothing good to happen to the Duggars. And there are those of you that don't dislike the Duggars, but don't like Josh, don't like Jim Bob, but also are sensitive to the children in this family that are not Josh or Jim Bob. So for those of you, I feel like I deserve, you deserve the content that you came here for, which includes talking about what's going on and the happenings in their lives. So just because the trial is over and we're still waiting on sentencing doesn't mean that the lives of the Duggars keeps ending. There's 20 kids, including Tyler, that are a part of this family and life does in inevitably go on. Now, we know that Josh's conviction was kind of like none of the boys said anything when he was convicted and none of the boys have spoken out. And we know mostly it's because the boys all work with Jim Bob Duggar and are tied up with Jim Bob in his businesses. And unfortunately, when you have your lives tied with Jim Bob, it makes it dang near impossible to say anything publicly where you uh, would denounce someone that you've also been doing business with. So John David, John David and Abby. David is the second oldest of the two boys and he claimed once everything was happened the first time with Josh back in 2015, not the first time, but the first time the public learned that he didn't want to be like his brother. And we thought that he would say something about his brother after the conviction, he hasn't. And now here we are today and he was he crashed a plane. Uh, he made a public statement, basically said that he landed in a field and uh, that's just, you know, what trained pilots do when things happen like that and that everyone was safe and everything was okay. And uh, that was it. And the NTSB investigation continues. They state that he ran out of fuel and that's not really what uh, John said in his statement, but either way, that plane is now gone. I don't know if they're going to try to repair it or not. And John David is going to continue on flying. Now, in the middle of all of that, about a week ago, I started getting some messages from some of you about seeing Abby Duggar at an event in uh, Rogers, Arkansas. So I just want to say a big hello to all of my people that are in the Northwest Arkansas area that are following me because of my Duggar coverage. Thank you guys so much for always reaching out to me when you have Duggar sightings or any sort of Duggar news that you'd like to share with me. Um, this actually came from someone local who sent me a photo photograph and this person might have actually posted them on Reddit. I don't know, but two separate people reached out to me who are at a consignment show uh, or cons assignment event that travels around the country and they go to it every single year and they said that they saw Abby Duggar at this event with John and she was in a wheelchair. 
And the photograph that I was provided did not have Abby's face seen. You could only see her from behind. It was very clear by the body that you could tell that it was John, David. You couldn't even see his head, but just the body shape looked like John and then it looked like Abby from the behind with the hair color. And I had a separate person send me the photograph and then another person sent me um, a message and said, yes, I actually saw her there too. She was at the event and they basically said that they had brought this wheelchair with them. They saw Abby and John get out of the car and Abby was in a wheelchair and they went into the event and John pushed Abby around. So they didn't really know what was going on with Abby. A lot of people in my comments immediately were like, oh my gosh, was it from the crash? Is she okay? My sources said that there was literally no evidence that she was hurt, no casting on her feet, nothing of the sort. Uh, they didn't know why she was in a wheelchair, but she was in one. So then some Redditors actually went onto Pinterest and they found uh, Abby's Pinterest board and they noticed that Abby was pinning, uh, making pins of gender reveals, uh, photographs, and she had an entire gender reveal folder and then she had a folder for a spring party. And her mom was also part of that folder on Pinterest and so it seemed like Abby and her mom were planning a gender reveal party. Well, planning a gender reveal party doesn't necessarily mean that you're pregnant but it was enough to get the rumors swirling that Abby was pregnant. So there's the, she's seen in a wheelchair. She's now got pins on her Pinterest board of gender reveals and she's planning some sort of spring party. And so what I did was what I do best and I actually reached out to my source who actually knows John and Abby and I said, do you know if Abby's pregnant? And I was told, yes, yes, Abby is pregnant allegedly. So what my source said is that Abby is just out of her first trimester and she has been dealing with hyperemesis gravidarum again. So if you guys followed along on Counting On when she was pregnant with Gracie, you know that she was really sick for her first pregnancy. So sick that she was not able to really do a whole lot during the entirety of her pregnancy. So for a lot of women, when you get pregnant, most women will have some upset stomachs for you know, the first trimester. And generally after the first trimester, most women that those side effects of the, 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 the nausea and the not feeling good kind of goes away. But some women, it develops and it becomes a lot more significant than just a stomach ache. It comes to the point where they can't hold anything down. They get really, really dehydrated. For a lot of these women that end up with this condition, they end up having to go to the hospital to get IV fluids. It can be extremely debilitating to the extent that they're extremely sick. They can't gain weight. They, they just... They're, they're sick their whole pregnancy. So basically what it is, is it's called, it, it causes severe nausea. And they say, America Pregnancy basically says that 70 to 80% of women have what's called morning sickness where they feel ill. Although if you've had a baby and if you're with me, morning sickness is not just in the morning. In fact, I actually had uh, nausea almost the entirety of my pregnancy with my son. I, it was horrible. I hated it. I was like so uninterested in being pregnant again as a result, but I don't, I did not have this condition, but it says that basically what it is, is that in some women, there's this extreme form of the morning sickness and it causes horrible side effects. So nausea, vom vomiting, weight loss, and electrolytes disturbances. This can have require uh, women having to receive fluid uh, through an intravenous uh, IV. They also they have to be monitored throughout the entirety of their pregnancy to make sure that the baby is growing, to make sure that their electrolytes are in, are stable. And they don't know specifically what causes it. They think it has something to do with hormones rising. That's what American Pregnancy uh, Association says about it, but they say the overall uh, cause of this is unknown. So everyone in my comments that has dealt with this has really struggled. I actually have a friend that went through this and she lost 15 pounds with her pregnancy. It was bad. 
and she was so sick. And the only thing that made it better was having the baby. So it's, it's tough. And apparently Abby is dealing with this again. And I was told by my source that not only is she dealing with it again, but it's worse this time. And they say that she's really, really struggling because not only does she have this and she's sick, but the first time that she had this and she was sick, she didn't have a baby and she didn't have to take care of a child. And now this time she has a child that she has to take care of and she is struggling to take care of Gracie and take care, care of herself and deal with the illness that she's facing. So it seems like her being in the wheelchair is because she doesn't feel good and she's just so weak. Abby is expecting, allegedly, according to my source, and is just past the first trust trimester and she's feeling terrible. So I shared this on my Instagram yesterday and I let you guys know the deal about what was going on. Some of you guys shared your own experiences with HG. One woman said this, I had HG and it's hell. I'm devastated for Abby. After my second, I was done. I cannot imagine living in a culture where there is pressure to continue to have children for as long as you can. Another person said, I had HG and it's horrific. It's almost impossible to survive without a good support system. I hope she has help. Another person said, my friend had this and, and was hospitalized a lot, a lot. One time they thought she was having small strokes and had to be hooked up and monitored. And then others of you were just more critical when I said that she was struggling to take care of Gracie, wondering why she doesn't have help from John or why she doesn't have help from anyone around her. And you, listen, I don't know the details about John's ability to help her or not help her and I don't know if she's getting help at all from any of the Duggars or any of the sisters or anything like that so all I know is that she's struggling I don't know if she's getting help I didn't really ask that question I'm not going to go with the John's not helping kind of thing because I really don't know I have no clue just that she's struggling and she does stay home with Gracie and John does work so it could just be while he's working I'm not sure Every family has their own structure, and obviously with this specific family, you know, the women do stay home and take care of the kids. And again, I do hope that she has help. I hope that someone's there to help her, because if she has what she had before and she's now it's worse, it, it's just going to be, it's going to be awful for her. I hope Abby gets all the way to the end of this pregnancy with a ton of support and with a lot of love, and I hope that their faith and uh, everything that they do with their faith doesn't prevent her from getting the medical care that she needs. So I hope that she sees her doctor regularly. I hope that she gets, if she needs her IVs, I hope if she, I just hope that she doesn't at all put herself in a position that's risky and I hope that John is supportive of that. That's my biggest concern with this family because they tend to try to do everything naturally. She had her baby in the hospital and so I think well, it's safe to say that she's probably working with an OB. She's also a licensed practical nurse. So my hope is that her medical knowledge will help her in this, do the right thing and make sure that she's getting the care that she needs. But they have a new baby coming. I believe end of August, early September, sounds like when the baby might be due. And at this point, don't know if it's a boy or a girl, but that's what I have. The Pinterest board apparently is Abby getting ready for her gender reveal and she is pregnant but also very sick. So that's what I have for now. If you've dealt with this dis uh, disorder or if you've had similar uh, symptoms, leave some comments, send some encouragement to Abby and let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. Bye guys.